I'm Jocelyn Doucet, CEO of PowerWave. Thank you and welcome to our series where we want to share what inspiring leaders are doing to create the future now. And today we're with John Warner, father of green chemistry, someone who really inspired me in my professional life. Hi, John. Hello. Nice to see you. Nice to see you as well. Um, you're the father of green chemistry. You're an inventor, a great innovator. And you spoke a lot about how nature is complex and how it can do fantastic things, uh, things we can't even do ourselves. Uh, so do you think that nature in the future should inspire us more? Absolutely. I think that we humans have invented our technologies where we take things from nature, we break them into pieces, we purify them, and then we reassemble them. Nature has already put them together in ways to make beautiful things. We need to reevaluate and find ways to keep the building blocks that nature puts together and keep them together. Yeah, that's, that's true. That's fantastic. I mean, nature has found ways through evolution to, to do very complicated things and through very complex equilibriums. And, and we in the industrial world are, are more with like high temperature and high pressure and all these things. Um, just during this pandemic, people learned um, how soap, soap works. Uh, that was fantastic like on TV. You can see how soap interacts with uh, grease and fats and things like that. So I think it makes the case that, you know, people need basic chemistry knowledge and people are actually interested to know more about it. So how do you see the role of scientific education in the future and, and science training in general is like, like how do we take fact-based decisions? We, we, we definitely need to focus on STEM education at a young age. Uh, I think that, you know, the, when you think of all the subjects that children from K through 12 are exposed to in school, biology, math, you know, social sciences, and all the different things that they do, chemistry is not necessarily any more difficult than any of the other subjects, but oftentimes it's the most poorly taught. And because of that bad experience that a child has when they first get exposed to chemistry, for the rest of their life, they believe that they have a, a, a negative reaction to the concept of chemistry. And it's really sad because the products that they buy, the politicians they vote for, every aspect of their life is, is, is more enriched with an appreciation for chemistry. You don't have to become chemists, but that appreciation, if it's not present it's such a loss yeah, absolutely and I, I think we we lack seeing the beauty of how nature works when we lack some basic knowledge and how chemistry is is complicated and so intimate with our lives yeah as a father of green chemistry what what's your view on the economy of the future how do you think this economy could essentially jump back and then is there anything to learn from from this pandemic and is there anything we can uh, you know we can propel ourselves in the future with with something different well, you know, the, there's a lot of things that this, this last several months have taught us. You know, it's interesting the, the pressure now between single use versus reusable when it comes to exposure to materials. You know, obviously we can't just say, okay, let's not have reusable bags when we go shopping. Let's go back to single use. We need to be thinking of how do we create reusable materials that are now resilient to things like viruses and stuff like that. And so we already had, we chemists, we material scientists already had a very long list of things we needed to invent. This last few months have told us there's even more on that list that we need to invent. But the ingenuity and creativity of the human race, I do believe we will come up with those solutions as long as we have the appropriate education to teach people how. What, what I think has changed a lot is if we go back 40, 50 years, people who invested in technologies were very much attached to that company. That it was they wanted that company to succeed and the amount of money they gave was purposefully to have that company succeed. And if that company succeeded, they succeeded. But now the way finance has evolved, people are sitting at a computer making millisecond investments, but then shorting over here and shorting over here. And the people investing don't care if a company succeeds or right. fails because there are mechanisms to make money in either direction. 
And so no one to, to have a company, as you know, that you're trying to get investors and to, to create, there is just as many people who will make money by you failing as by you succeeding. There is no counterpart to that in nature. In nature, there is vested interest in shared resources. And so now, um, um, unless we do something to change that, and what I feel, you know, what do I know about economics? I'm just a chemist. But I think <laughs> if there was a policy to incentivize holding on to an investment for many years, saying to an investor, if you hold on to this investment for five years, you can have it tax free. Now they're going to care about the success of that company. They're not going to be able to short it tomorrow. And I think that if there is an overwhelming tax incentive to hold on to a, then that vested interest in shared purpose would be returned back. Well, thank you very much for, for being yeah. here and sharing your vision. And, and thanks to our viewers for being with us today. If you like this interview, please share and stay with us for more inspiring conversations with, with leaders making the future now. Thank you very much, John. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Thank you.